My name is Alyssa Morrow, and I'm from UC Berkeley, the AMP Lab. And today I'll be talking about distributed visualization for genomic analysis. Okay, so first let's talk a little bit about why distributed visualization. Why is this required? Well, if we take a couple steps back in history, we can look at the 1000 Genomes Project about 16 years ago. This produced about 10 gigabytes of data, easily fitting on an individual laptop, so you can easily start up your laptop, view this data um, on a single machine. Now, if we fast forward to the present, we're looking at petabytes of genomic data. So now the question is, how do we actually visualize this data? Well, we have a couple options here. We can maybe subselect the data we want using a command line tool, parsing up our files, and then we can start it up on our laptop and maybe use IGV to visualize this data. A second option would be to get a massive node, put all of our data on that massive node, and visualize our data as such. However, this can be a little expensive and we don't all have access to such machinery. So the idea here is we would like to visualize this data without parsing it and by running it on commodity machines. And this is where distributed visualization is going to come into play. So let's take a look at the current state of the art for genome browsers. Well, currently, genome browsers are only single node scalability. And what this means is we really can only view a few chromosomes at a time. And this is up to about 60 gigabytes or whatever you can fit on your local laptop. Additionally, they're also limited in the amount of data they can summarize and display. Currently, tools only view about 0.00125% of the whole genome. Now, if we already know what we want to visualize, this can be useful because we can just go to the region we're interested in, look at the variance, look at the coverage, and make a conclusion. But what if we don't actually know what we're looking for? It might be a little more useful to zoom out farther and get summary st statistics on regions of interest. Now let's take a look about what the ideal browser looks like. Well, ideally, we'd like multi-node scalability that allows us to view much larger um, files. And what this means is we can view, but also compare and explore thousands of whole genome samples. And lastly, we'd like to zoom and explore to larger regions. So ideally, we'd like to view about maybe 500,000 base, 500, base pairs to maybe a million base pairs and get summary statistics on that region. So this is only still about 0.0125% of the genome, but this is still an order of magnitude larger than what current genome browsers can show to you. So at UC Berkeley, we're working on a tool called Mango, and this is a distributed genome browser. And Mango tries to hit on three key factors that will support genome visualization in a large scale. And the first is that it's a scalable genome browser. So what we want to do here is store and view large amounts of data. We want to store our data in one single location and just be able to boot up a browser without pre-processing all of the data we're interested in. Secondly, we would like intuitive visualizations. And what this means, kind of talking from the previous slide, is we'd like to make sense of larger regions, which is a feature that current browsers don't support. And lastly, we'd like to build this on commodity systems, meaning we'd like to plug into existing analytics tools. What we'd like here to use well-supported open source systems on large commodity systems. So there's actually been a lot of previous work at UC Berkeley and other institutions have that, that have built a really good, strong foundation for distributed visualization. So at the lowest level here, we have how do we actually store our data? And what we'd like to do is support the legacy file formats like BAM, VCF, and BED. But what we can do is we can actually optimize those data sets further for a distributed environment. And what we use for this is Apache Parquet. And what this allows us to do is take those formats of our alignment data and our variant data and distribute them out across a cluster. But what this also allows us to do is select very fine regions of our data. Um, so if we just want to view a very small section of the data, we can subselect without reading all of the data from disk. So on top of that, we have our computation engine. And many of you have maybe heard of uh, Apache Spark. This is a large uh, computational um, system that allows you to analyze large data sets in a bulk uh, processing environment. And this is generalized for all types of data sets. 
So on top of that, which Frank is going to talk about a little more in the next talk, is an API called Atom. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to take all of those really nice abstractions from Spark for a distributed environment, but apply those to genomic data in particular. So what we can do is we can run whole scans on our genomic data to find interesting regions. So on top of that, we have a couple other cool projects um, on the big data genomic stack, which I'm not going to talk about today. So I'm focusing on Mango. But the point here is that we have this great setup for batch processing systems, so processing large amounts of genomic data. The difference between Mango here is what we're interested in low latency queries on genomic data, because low latency is extremely important for visualization. So I'm going to talk about a couple optimizations that we have to make to use this stack in a visualization setting. Okay, so here's an overview of the Mango architecture. And the nice thing about the Mango architecture, it takes a pretty layered approach. So you can substitute out different layers. So let's say if you have a different front end visualization you're interested in, you can substitute that on the stack. So at the very bottom layer is the cluster layer. And this is a lot of what we've talked about in the previous slide. So we have our data formats, so we can load in our Parquet files, but also we can support um, BAM, VCF, and BED files. On top of that, we have Atom for data transformation. This allows us to do conversions on genomic data sets and do whole genome scans before the user even uses the tool. And lastly, we have access optimizations. And these are specific to work in a low latency environment. So what we want here is to modify the stack to support low latency queries on genomic data. So on top of that is the second layer, the data servicing layer. Um, we use Scalatra, and this is because um, it's built in Scala, a programming language, and this is very compatible with Apache Spark. And then lastly is our third layer, the actual visualization. We've recently switched to pileup.js, and this is actually an open source Apache licensed JavaScript genome browser that was developed in the Hammer Lab. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about what are those optimizations we had to make to support genomic queries in particular. So the goal here is to uh, achieve interactive latency, it's on that batch-oriented batch platform we saw before. So a couple of questions we have to answer are persistent storage. So how do we reduce the latency when we're actually loading in our raw data initially? The second question we want to answer is how do we organize data in memory to further reduce genomic queries? And the last question is for computation. So how can we compute on genomic data to produce interesting visualizations and find interesting regions that the user may not have been aware of initially? So for persistent storage optimizations, like I said, we use Parquet. Um, we push down predicates to disk. What this means is that we can select very fine regions of the genome. So let's say we only want chromosome 1, the first 100 base pairs. We don't have to scan all of that data across the cluster. We can just go to the node that that's located on and grab that specific section of data. But some more important optimizations that Mango has made is specific to caching. So um, the nice thing about pileup.js is they implement a very nice front end cache for us. But below that, we do um, lazy materialization of data. And this is useful if you have um, more data that can fit in memory. So let's say you have a couple terabytes of um, BAM files, and you're just interested in viewing a couple small regions of that information. What we do is we um, Let's say someone wants to view a small region of chromosome 1. We just load that data into memory, check if it's in memory, and then put it in an RDD, which is the basic abstraction in Spark, a resilient distributed data set. So then if a user wants to refetch that region on chromosome 1 or a surrounding region, we can just go fetch that from memory, um, which, which is just a basic caching implementation. So the next type of optimizations, we made our memory optimizations. And this is to reduce uh, latency for genomic queries once the data is already in memory. And we can think of this as a very simple overlapping query. So let's say we have features or reads that span a two-dimensional range. What we want to do is just simply fetch all the data overlapping that region. So many of you might be familiar with an interval tree. 
what we've used is we've taken the idea of an interval tree for achieving low latency overlapping queries, and we've implemented this in RDD. And this gives us a really nice distributed low latency environment to query specific regions of the genome. So say a user wants to fetch a small region. Sorry. Say a user wants to fetch a small region from chromosome three. We can just go to the specific node where that data is located and return that specific region. So the last optimization we've made are um, computational op op optimizations. So how do we compute on our data to find interesting regions in the genome before the user even uses our visualization in the first place? So what we've implemented is a very simple discovery mode that runs before the user uses the visualization. And what we do here is whole genome scans looking for specific aspects of our data. So currently we've implemented some pretty simple discovery modes, mostly regarding density. Um, but we're looking for some more interesting discovery modes in the future, such as filtering variants on transcript effects, mapping quality, coverage, and such. So once the user runs um, the discovery mode, it will just highlight in the genome um, those interesting regions that the query has returned positive for. So we've done some local comparisons to see, okay, we would like to scale up, but how does um, our tool compare on a local machine? So um, this is this line right here, the green line, is um, a query, a query for a, a set of queries on a standard um, genome browser. We see a little spike in our query because that spike is the first point in which the tool loads data in the first place. So we get a little latency um, once we are initially loading data on a smaller region. So Mango initially has a higher startup time, which we're working to reduce. But overall, on a local machine, we achieve, um, we're pretty compliant with current tools, which is really great. So then the next question is, how do we um, scale up to larger amounts of data? So running on the 1,000 genomes variant set, um, we're achieving about in the interactive threshold of 500 milliseconds once we scale up to about 32 cores. Um, we are flattening out a little bit past 32 cores, so we're working to get better horizontal scalability. But right now, we're pretty happy with these results once the data is loaded into memory. So what's next for Mango? Um, Mango is a pretty new project, so we're looking for greater flexibility. And what this means is we'd like an integration of a query interface for more flexible browsing of data. And what this basically means is you can filter by specific aspects of variance, kind of transferring that discovery mode to low latency queries while the user is interacting with their data. The second is extension of discovery mode. We've discussed this in the previous slide, but just adding some more prefetching methods and discovery modes for low latency visualizations. And lastly, we'd like to focus a little on user modeling. So right now we have some basic prefetching techniques, um, but what we'd like to do is advance these prefetching techniques to better predict what the user is currently viewing and what other interesting regions they might view in the future. So um, our, all our tools are Apache 2 license in our group. Um, BDGgenomics.org is where you can t take a look at our group. Otherwise, the GitHub repo for Mango is up on GitHub. Um, if you're interested in just checking us out or helping out, we're always happy for any pull requests. Um, but I'd also, I'd just like to acknowledge pileup.js. They've done a lot of great work with um, JavaScript genome browsers, so I'd really like to thank them for all their hard work. Thank you. <laughs>